In this episode of Lady K Sailing, we're talking all about stepping and unstepping your mast so that you can take your sailboat on the Erie Canal. The Erie Canal, of course, has some height restrictions, so if you're in a sailboat, you're going to have to take the mast down. The maximum height you can be on the canal is about 15 feet. Now, once the mast is down, you could either pay a company to truck the mast from one end of the canal to the other, so it's there waiting for you, or you can do what most people do and build some kind of wooden framework to hold the mast up above your deck so that it comes with you and you don't have to pay that extra cost. Now, stepping and unstepping the mast at either end of the canal, you have a lot of options. So we're going to go over those options right now, and we're going to do sort of pros and cons for each one. So we're going to start at the eastern end near Albany. When you go to take the mast down or put the mast up, the first and most common place to do it is Hoppano's. Hoppano's Marina is reasonably priced, and they really do know what they're doing because they are the most common place sailors get their masts put up or taken down. They will tune the, the rig for you, and there's lots of leftover lumber from other cruisers, so if you do need to build some sort of wooden framework to hold your mast, you're not going to have to go to the lumber store to get anything to do it. It's all just sort of sitting there, and it's free for the taking. The downside to Hoppano's is, of course, you pay a little bit more money, and you're going to pay to stay there overnight. Um, typically, when you take the mast up or down, you're a whole day affair, and you end up spending the night wherever you did it, so you're going to pay a little bit more at Hoppano's because it is a, a bigger marina. It's also 20 miles further down the Hudson, which means further from the Erie Canal. So you're taking the mast down 20 miles before you really need to. The next option on the eastern end is the option we choose with Lady K, and that's the Castleton Boat Club. A lot cheaper to stay overnight, a lot cheaper to get the mast taken down, um, and a lot cheaper overnight costs for your overnight stay there. The downside to Castleton is you get no help at all. You pay $55 to rent their gin pole. It's an electric gin pole, but there is no one on site to help you, so you have to bring your own help. There's no provisioning in Castleton either. It's a very sleepy little town, so if you need anything, you're not going to find it here. Um, also, there's not very much lumber available because not as many cruisers use this option. On the western end of the Erie Canal, there are quite a few more options. This is the, the Buffalo end of the canal, or the Lake Erie end. The first option, which is right on the canal, right in Tonawanda, and quite commonly used, is the Wardell Boatyard. The positives here are, of course, they're right on the canal. It's as close as you can possibly get with your mast up. The rates are about mid-range in the pack. The downside is Wardell has some older equipment. Um, I probably wouldn't do a large, heavy mast there. They're also always busy, so it takes a few days or a week to actually get in there, and you're probably going to want to tune the rig yourself when they actually get it up. The next option is Smith Boys. This is only a couple miles further from the canal than Wardell, so on the plus side, they can do any mass. They have two different cranes. They got us in the next day, so I mean, even that was in, that was in busy season, we got in the next day. And, uh, you know, of course, it's still close to the canal, and the prices are about mid-range. The downside is there's a huge amount of current on the Niagara River, and to get the Smith Boys, you do have to go out into the Niagara River. It's very hard to maneuver in there, and you're also probably going to want to tune the mast yourself. The next option on the western end, and this is the most common one, is RCR Yachts. RCR Yachts can do almost any mast. It's the most common place. It's completely hands-off. They'll tune your rig. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic, and anybody with a really complicated or very heavy rig usually goes to RCR. The downside is it's 15 miles up the Niagara River, so it's a lot further from the Erie Canal with your mast down. It's by far the most expensive option. We heard as much as $9 a foot quoted, and you do have to wait. Our buddy boat waited a week or a week and a half to get their mast up at RCR. I suppose you get what you pay for, 
Um, and if you have a complicated rig, you're going to have to go to RCR. We, of course, went with Smith Boys because our friends Bruce and Sue set us up there. So let's get started and get our mast put back up so we can be a sailboat again. Hey guys, six o'clock in the morning, just waking up. We got our coffees. We're downloading some maps, updating the Navionics map base for Lake Erie. Um, Tonawanda, cool spot. Lots and lots of docks here. And there's docks on both sides. They're all down that wall too. Like there's tons of room to tie up here. Um, everything's got power. We got a pedestal right there. Um, we're not plugged in. We didn't bother because uh, we really only plug in to run the AC. Otherwise the panels pretty much take care of us. Um, and you're motoring up the ditch the whole time. So, I mean, your alternator's always spinning. There's no point needing power. Um, we arranged to get a pressure washer. So when we get to uh, the marina today, we can wash this uh, crud off the boat. She gets pretty dirty going up the ditch. Um, the lines that you hang on to are always soaked with seawater. So when you pull on them, they squeeze them, they sort of bleed all over the deck. Um, kind of sucks. So the boat's filthy. Um, she's just a big mess. But if we can go today to the marina and get the mast off the deck, and then I'll take the jerry cans off and the generator off, just take everything off the whole deck, power wash the whole thing, like, yeah. That'll be good. Anyway, gonna get her fired up and head to the marina pretty soon. Should be pretty cool. Our friend Bruce from last year is meeting us at the marina. Um, he was on the 26-footer, and he was uh, single-handing it all the way down the whole Erie Canal, all the way to the Florida Keys, actually. Um, if you watch last year's videos on the way down, um, really, really super cool dude. So he's meeting us there. He lives in uh, Dunkirk, New York, so uh, he's going to drive up and meet us and help us get the mast up. So that'll be pretty cool. And then our buddy boat, Vagari, um, that you guys saw sort of like a week ago, um, he's going to be catching up with us today, and he wants to step his mast too, so he's coming to the same place. So... Um, bad weather on Lake Erie is causing us to be uh, sort of delayed by a few days at this end of Lake Erie. So we figured, what the heck, let's just help Mark put his mast up on Bagari, and then we can race down Lake Erie together. So, be pretty cool. Alright guys, we're going to boogie. We put another uh, five gallon can of diesel in, and uh, we're going to get going. It's only two miles away, but we're in the red for diesel, so better safe than sorry. Uh, Mark's only... Uh, I don't know, maybe eight hours behind us, so we'll have our buddy boat back. That'll be pretty cool. But let's go Smith Boys Marina. That's where we're headed. Um, and we have to go under Tonawanda Island. Apparently, when you come out of here, you're right at Tonawanda Island. And if you try to go north, there's a bridge and there's some serious current in there. And the charts say don't do it unless you're in something really powerful. Uh, and a sailboat doesn't really qualify as really powerful. So we're going to go south around the south tip of the island. And we're going to go up the Niagara River to the north tip of the island and we're going to come down on it. That way we don't have to deal with the bridge in the middle because it's a pinch point and I guess it's really bad. So I've never done it, but I am going to heed the warnings and go the long way. Still only two miles. Anyway. Impression it's gonna be on the right up here. There's a travel lift slip. Let's see any cranes though. There? Yeah.
He doesn't know either. He works oh. at the other one. Man, there's a tide in here. Holy crap. We spinning fast. There's like a hull there with like nothing. Yeah. Pretty big boat too. I don't know where I'm going. Holy crap, the tide. Wow. sideways down this thing. Yeah. So little control, man. All right, guys, we are at Smith Boys Marina. Our friend Bruce is here. Hey, Bruce. Hey, guys. He's got his uh, <laughs> Lady K sailing shirt on. Um, the guy just came over. He's ready for us. Um, the big crane is broken, so our buddy boat is not going to be able to step their mast here. Their mast is 65 feet, I think, um, and 1,500 pounds. Um, and this guy said his big crane operator is on vacation. He's gone on a sailing trip. So the, only the little crane is operational, which means only we can step. Uh, the bigger boat won't be able to come here. So uh, we got some uh, vague instructions on where to go up there. So we're gonna try to make that happen. But there's a like a two knot current running through here. So if you try to turn around, the boat will walk sideways very, very quickly in the wrong direction. So it's gonna be interesting. It's a little bit stressful. We'll get it done.
All right, guys, are we worn out yet? Six back up. We got uh, four stay, back stay, and we got the two cap shrouds um, on. I haven't done the, uh, the lowers yet uh, because I want to tune the mast, but I wanted to take a minute to talk about a mast boot. And I've tried everything to make the water not get in here. Um, and this mast boot is pretty good and it fits pretty good, but there's no real 100% way to make sure water stays out. So I started experimenting a couple years ago and I came up with a pretty cool solution that you guys might like. So check this out. Bicycle tube. That's it for this week's episode of Lady K Sailing, and it also wraps up our Erie Canal mini-series. If you want to know anything about the Erie Canal that we didn't cover, go ahead and leave us a comment below, or send us a message on Facebook at Lady K Sailing. If you liked this episode, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button so that you can see next week's episode. Also, a huge shout out to our patrons who make the whole thing possible. Patreon allows you guys to send us a couple of bucks every Friday when we drop a new episode. That's it for me. Uh, happy Halloween, everybody. It is Halloween today. I will see you guys next week for Lake Erie. Bye.